and welcome to the Nintendo Players UK podcast, episode 13. I'm your host, Jen Griffiths. I'm co-founder of Nintendo North Wales and Nintendo Players UK head admin. I've got with me today special guest Jason Page. Welcome to the podcast, Jason. Would you like to introduce yourself properly? Hello, my name is Jason Page. I'm in London. I've just let, let us see a sale, uh, MegaCon, and uh, I'm glad to be here with Nintendo UK. Okay, so Jason, you're most known in the Nintendo community as singing the original Pokemon anime in the English language back in 1998, which was just over 25 years ago. That's correct. What led you into that first job? Well, as you see around me is my greatest brands, and there's my face right there, actually. (laughs) The greatest brands that I've been involved in. Um, I am a vocal gymnast, a session singer, and have been uh, lending my voice to all of the various projects. Uh, One of those projects was Domino's Pizza Delivers, which was for a company called Paradise Music. And they went on to be hired to uh, do the English version of the Pokemon theme song and and, uh, uh, write a completely new English version for the Pokemon theme song when the Pokemon theme song was brought to the United States. And um, as a session singer, most of these are paid auditions. When you do a session, you are paid to sing the the audition for the client so barbie says we need the song that goes oh it's an itsy bitsy teeny weeny giggly weekly baby emily barbie walks and emily laughs right away you sing it and we see if it's something that uh goes and if it goes and becomes a final then there's more union pay or sometimes it's just a buyout fee if they like it um so pokemon was a paid audition Catch him if you can, Pokemon! And uh, Catch Him If You Can was eventually rejected and replaced with Gotta Catch Him All! Because Catch Him If You Can did not make it through the corporate uh, audition process. But uh, my voice did, and the rest of the song did, and then they just updated it with the good lyric, and the rest is uh, you guys. Loving it, sharing it, jumping in front of the TV three times a day to watch the show. And then uh, the company decided to make To Be a Master with I'm on the road to Viridian City. Another song on it that I sang. And that record was a number one Billboard children's album that uh, became the... The, the underscore to your imagination as you played Pokemon in the various forms that Pokemon then expanded into from the games and the toys and the movies and the TV shows and the cosplay and the events and all of the incredible artwork and music other, other than this record that has been created by the Pokemon community. Um, but yeah, a session singing is how I paid my bills and how I still do uh, in the world and expand myself into the world through doing a lot of uh, work as a producer, a writer, or a performer for a multitude of brands, as you can see behind me. Yeah, that's amazing. But when you first when you first went for the, um, uh, the original song for the Pokemon anime, you didn't believe it was going to do very well, did you? So what, how did no, you no, feel? No, I believed it, it would be as, I would believe it. I believed it would be as huge as Legomania, Legomania, which was airing at the time between 95 and 2000. I wrote and sang on the Legomania theme song uh, and it was a huge success. So every time I go into the studio, I am trying to hit the ball out of the park. I'm not going in going, oh, this isn't gonna go anywhere. I tend to not wanna do tend to not want to do jobs that I have no confidence in. Uh, whether you know how big a thing is going to be or not, uh, obviously there, there is a, a bit of mystery to everything, but you yeah. want everything to be a massive success. And uh, Pokemon was a success because of, because of a lot of factors. And it continues to be a, a great success because of uh, a lot of people's enthusiasm for it throughout the world. 
Yeah, and it's well, I was one of those 12, 13 year olds back in 1998 who watched the original anime, so I was one of those fans. Um, but um, you also sang Viridian City and the TBA Master. Um, which is your favorite between the two? Have you got a favorite? No, I have experiences, not favorites. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so I've got a question from one of our members as well, which is what is your favorite Pokemon of the series? Oh, that's the that's the answer that I just lifted from that particular question that I get all the time. I don't have a favorites. I have experiences. When you have favorites, you limit yourself to that one thing, and you you don't experience all the other things that can be very valuable, uh, all the other nutrients that all the other Pokemon bring. So I have I'm open to the experiences of all Pokemon and not limiting myself to just liking one. Even though you got the necklace, is that not your favorite one? <laughs> Even though I have a necklace, somebody ran up and put this Gengar on me, and uh, <laughs> it's great. But, you know, if I only wear this necklace, then I'm only going to look like this. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I've got a Pikachu necklace, but, yeah, Pikachu's not my favorite. I agree with the experience comment. That's a good one. Um, yeah, experiences are, are how we open ourselves up to all the nutrients that we can have in life and how we keep ourselves broad and, yeah, and definitely. Uh, diverse. So talking of diversity and being 25 years since that original song, um, how how have you experienced things over the... Oh, you've muted yourself. I lost you there for a second. Yeah, you got, we're good, we're back. Um, so it's been 25 years since your first song. Um, with Pokemon, and you talk about diversity and experiences. You've had a lot of diverse experiences over those last 25 years. Would you like to tell us a bit about them? We noted particularly about your work with Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Johnson uh, being an actual Pokemon, but have you got any other memories or a favourite show you could tell us about? Um, well, everything behind me is uh, is kind of the 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 menu of items that I talk about. Is there something that you're interested in that's behind me right now? Obviously, we've got Michael Jackson down here, which is very significant, and uh, Meatloaf and Farner and Aerosmith and uh, Lego, and over here we have Frank Zappa, which is really great, and maybe more related to your community would be Elite Beat Agents, which I sang Canned Heat uh on the jamiroquai song and walkie talkie man and uh you're the inspiration which are three tracks that appear on that and i believe that's it correct it's a what sorry you, you lost there you muted Th this is a nintendo this is a nintendo game yeah well that's what i said so that's why yeah. Okay. Making reference to that for you. Yes. It's correct, right? That's Nintendo. Yes, we've got some Elite Bait Agent fans in the community, definitely. So they'll be glad to know that. Yeah. Do you play that? I don't play it myself, although I am a musician, but I've got no sense of rhythm, so beat games aren't really my strong point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a cool game. I have actually seen it. Uh, there's lots of videos of it online. Cool. I'll check it out at some point, no doubt, because our community likes to feature new games and different types of games. So, um, an old game. <laughs> yes, it's it's probably retro now, isn't it? But um, so yeah, it is. Probably. Um, we go to 2016 now, where apparently you re-recorded the original theme for the uh, the height of Pokemon Go in that summer. How cool! That's correct. Uh. Um, I was trapped in a Pokeball until 2016. I didn't really understand the Pokemon community. It was one of the many credits on my wall of credits. And uh, in 2016, when Pokemon Go came out, the Pokemon community started playing Pokemon, the theme on Spotify and all the various streaming platforms that didn't exist beforehand. So. Uh, media organizations wanted to know who, and, and the people who had now grown up wanted to know who was the guy who sang the song that underscored their childhood. So I popped out of the Pokeball and I uh, let them know it was me through making a video of me in the studio and re-recording my own version of the theme. At the time, YouTube was, uh, the, a lot of the copyright uh, restrictions would 
not allow you to use certain types of music on videos. So the Pokemon theme was, I used it on a couple of videos and it got removed. And I thought I can't even use my own song on a video. So I re-recorded it so that I had my own version of it with, you know, that wasn't the, the original masters, but I could sing it and re-record it so that it sounded very much like the original. And I put that out and use that as my karaoke version when I'm doing performances as well. Uh, but that's what inspired it was people growing up and and uh, having Pokemon merge the theme song merge out of their imaginations into the reality that the hum that is a human being that sing and it's not just some uh, world inside of their mind to underscore their Pokemon. Cool. Did you actually play Pokemon Go yourself? Um, I did start playing Pokemon Go a little bit after um, Pokemon uh, Go came out. Yeah, because uh, I got interviewed and I didn't. And in this funny in the CNN interview where they, they have me walking down the street playing Pokemon Go, I wasn't really playing Pokemon Go. I didn't know anything about the game, but they wanted to have some kind of footage in their interview of me playing it because it's rel related to the Pokemon Go craze. So I, uh, I then eventually learned how to play Pokemon Go. And then I did a video for my Pokemon Go theme song, Catch the World with a Throw, right there. And in the video, I used some footage of me catching some Pokemon. Fair enough. <laughs> so um, you've just been at MegaCon London this weekend, and you've got a busy week ahead of you this week. Ah, you... Okay. Yes, yes. I don't know whether you I'm hear trying that. to use the background noise, that's all. Okay. So, yeah, you've just been at Megacon, and you've got a busy week ahead of you. Um, Correct. But you're still in the UK. Could you let us know what you're up to this week, in case people would like to join um, you? Well, we've just finished Megacon. We're doing Megacon Dublin um, next weekend. But until then, I'm going to do a, four different events in the UK. We're going to Trident Cards on Tuesday. Trident is in Nottingham, which is a couple of hours northwest, uh, slightly northwest of London. Then we're coming back to London for Brotherhood Games. Uh, we're going to be appearing at this incredible game store. Um, signing autographs with the voice actor who was the original Meowth as well. Yes. And then on Thursday, we're going to go down to Hearn Bay to the sub center, the largest submission center in the UK. Uh, um, it's Dan Davies and he has an incredible Facebook, Facebook group. And we are going to be signing autographs there. And then we're coming up Thursday night to perform at, uh, what is the place called? Um, it's carpet in factory. the Carpet Factory, I think it's what it's called, or well, the Carpet Shop in uh, Peckham, where I'm actually going to be performing with a DJ named DJ Oblig, who has done some Pokemon uh, remixes, and he's having a birthday celebration, and that's really cool. The Carpet Shop in Peckham. Then Friday, we're going to fly to Dublin and do the Pokemon, uh, the, the uh, Megacon in Dublin, Friday, and sa Saturday, and Sunday. So then I'm coming back to London time. and headed back to New York and then Baltimore and then back to Los Angeles. Busy life, busy life. All right. Well, thank you for coming to talk to us today at Nintendo Players UK. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and we send you all the best. And hopefully some of our crew can meet you at some point. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe uh, your squirrel behind you or your Snorlax over there on the left. Got Charmander <laughs> and Snorlax. Oh, wait, Charmander, sorry. No, it's not yeah. Squirtle. Charmander, Charmander was my starter back in the day. And I could see your little Pikachu there as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, they all thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. Let me know when this is on and I'll, uh, I'll forward it to my socials. Will do. Thank you.